All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we have a very important video actually by a Muslim who he is really a very good help for us as a Christians, and we should appreciate his help. Actually, maybe we should donate for him. Uh, today the topic will be, uh, and be my witness, is not me who is saying what I will put in the screen. It's not me. It is the Muhammadan. The Muhammadan they want you to believe in a God. He sent 124,000 books, but this God, he could not protect any of them, except one. And the Muslims are crying. Why you don't want to believe us that all Allah books are gone? Allah is the biggest loser in history. He keeps sending books one after one, one after one, one after one. He have the biggest library, but this library is empty now. All the books and the shelves are gone. There's only one book. It's called the Quran. So today we have a, a Muslim uh, who is a very, very, very super intelligent. <clears throat> and he's going to help us to understand what happened to Allah and his books. So please welcome with me, a brother, Dr. Ahmad Adnan Muhammad uh, Ali Susu Dudu. I don't know what his name. And this guy don't even have high school, but yet he is very knowledgeable. Eh, this is what YouTube can do. Let us see what this guy want to say to us about what happened to Allah books. What happened to what? To Allah books. You see, the Christians, the problem is, we Christian, when we see a Muslim saying the Bible is corrupted, we think he's talking about our book. No, my friend, he's talking about Allah book. <laughs> Listen to this and die laughing. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm Adnan Rashid, your brother, back with another video on the topic of the Quran. Does the Quran endorse the Bible is the question I'm going to address today. And hopefully I will be going through some points to clarify this particular question. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? Firstly, let me highlight as to why the Christian missionaries have lately used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine, if someone came to me and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not, do you expect me to say, the Bible is corrupt, or the Bible confirms the Quran? Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran, therefore the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No. Stop. Stop. Would that be a good defense of your scriptures? No. Muslims be my witness. Who is the one who said that? Adnan Rashid. The one who say, okay, let us read here again, maybe because maybe we misunderstood what he said. Uh, say it again, uh, brother Adnan. We are all listening. Does the Quran endorse the Bible is the question I'm going to address today. And hopefully I will be going through some points to clarify this particular question. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? Firstly, let me highlight as to why the Christian missionaries have lately used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine, if someone came to me and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not, do you expect me to say, the Bible is corrupt, or the Bible confirms the Quran? Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran, therefore the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No, I would pick up. Stop, you idiot. You just laugh at your God. <laughs> I cannot believe you, man. You know what? I think you 100% you are bait by the Jews. I, you are fishy, man. He cannot be a Muslim. Isn't it your prophet in the Quran? He says the same as you just said. Go and you will find me in the Torah. You just told us. Say it again. Say it again, you idiot. You just said it's wrong to do that. Did you just say it's wrong to this? It's just, 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 say it again. Say it again. Used a strategy to defend the Bible. Now imagine if someone came to me mm -hmm. and asked me whether the Quran is corrupt or not. Mm -hmm. Do you expect me to say the Bible is corrupt or the Bible confirms the Quran. 
go to the Bible. The Bible confirms with the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran. Therefore, the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense of my scripture? No. No. Absolutely. So your God, Allah, is stupid. And Adnan Rashid is spanking Allah as we speak. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Adnan Rashid. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, if you don't mind, uh, please, uh, I'm going to show you a few verses in the screen and uh, I, I would like you uh, to uh, read with us and uh, uh, forgive me, please, because you are the one who said that Allah is a stupid and your prophet is a stupid too. Chapter 7, verse 157, it says exactly what you say, that this is wrong. We should not do that. Do you expect me really, if somebody came to me and says to me, the Quran is corrupt, I say to you, no, the Bible is corrupt. And to confirm the Quran, I say to you, go to the Bible and you will find the Bible confirming the Quran. This is no wrong. Read with me. Those who follow the messengers, chapter 7, verse number 157. And this is your Muslim translation, so don't tell me, Christian Prince, this is your translation, blah, blah, blah. Huh? Okay. Those who follow the messengers and illiterate prophet, whom find mentioned in their own scriptures, so they are saying to him, you are not in our book. He says, no, you are in our, your book. Your book confirmed me. Go to your book. In your book, it's confirmed about me. My Quran confirmed in your book, in the law and in the gospel. Do you see it? But you just said that this is a stupid way to do that. Everybody heard you. But this is what happened when someone he do falafel business, he opened religion business. You have no knowledge in your religion. And now you are going to school Muslims about Islam. And now you are spanking your God, giving him the biggest nail over ever in his coffin. Everybody heard you. How you can fix this one now? Everybody heard you saying that you cannot say go. Go to, the, uh, go to the Bible and you will find the Quran. Go to the Bible, you can find me. No, you cannot do that. But your prophet, he did that. And your God, he did that. You are literally stupid. Literally. Shame on you to insult your prophet and to say this is wrong. Not only you are insulting your prophet, you are saying the Quran is wrong. And if you read the interpretation for this verse, you can open any interpretation. You will see all of it says the same. As you said, that the Christian and the Jews, they refuse Muhammad. Muhammad, he said to them, your your scriptures confirm my Quran. Your scriptures confirm me as a prophet. Your scriptures you find it in the Torah and you find it in the Gospel. Say it again, because this is like a music for me. I don't know. I mean, the the, the Jews hired you for sure. You cannot be a Muslim. You work for the Mossad maybe or the Shem Beit. Corrupt or not? Do you expect me to say? the Bible is corrupt, or the Bible confirms the Quran. Go to the Bible. The Bible confirms the Quran. The Bible confirms the Quran, therefore the Quran is not corrupt. Would that be a good defense no. of my scripture? Absolutely. No. no. I would pick up works of scholars, and I would explain as to why the Quran is not corrupt. Ah. Okay, so guys, Adnan Rashid, he schooled Allah and he showed Allah is wrong. We showed you the verse in the Quran where Allah he is using that same method he refused. And uh, Adnan Rashid, he said, this is stupid. You know, this is not right to, to do that. So obviously Allah is wrong and Muhammad is a false prophet. However, now, he, in order for him to prove that the Bible is corrupt, he will use the scholars. Hmm. The scholars. Which scholars? you know you will use the scholars so now you are not going to follow your quran and you follow the scholars because listen to this if the scholars are right about the bible is corrupt as you are going to say that's mean this verse in the quran is a stupid why because if he said to them you find it in your book those who follow the messenger huh? and learn the prophet whom they find mentioned in their scriptures but they find in his time so the scholars they say this book is corrupt and you must and the funny it is you uh, uh, shushu who keeps saying that the paraclete is muhammad eh? 
Or by thought is corrupt. And your prophet, he is using the same method, saying, but your prophet, he failed. He did not know where to find himself. He just told them my name in your book. The Quran is confirmed in your book. So when we as a Christian, we show you what is written in your book, we are not approving our book to be true. We are showing you a contradiction in the stupid Quran. That's the whole point. We do not need Muhammad who came 600 years after Jesus to confirm a book he himself cannot even read. You see, the reason Muhammad, he could not find his name in their book because he did not know how to read their book. Can he? <laughs> you see, if Muhammad is a prophet of God, shouldn't he say to them, okay, open the book of Isaiah as an example, or open the book of etc. as an example, verse number etc. as an example. Why he cannot do that? Because he, you Muslim, in front of us, you Muslim, you are saying he is an unlearned prophet. Ignorant. So the ignorant is teaching you and you are teaching us. That's wonderful. So your master is an ignorant and you learn from the ignorant to teach us about ignorance. So first of all, we are not defending the gospel and we don't have to because you are insulting Islam and fighting Allah. Why we want to fight against you? We are just making everybody laugh. It's a comedy time. You know, when this guy is saying the Torah and the Injil is corrupted, he is saying the Torah of Allah and the Injil is corrupted. Chapter 3, verse number 3, as you see. Who is the one who sent down the law of Moses? Allah. Okay, who is the one who sent the gospel of Jesus? Allah. Okay, who is Rashid? Rashid is the one who confirmed that the gospel of Allah, which sent to Jesus, is gone. <laughs> Thank you, Rashid. So what you confirm to us, that Allah is a joker. He sent his books, but he is not capable of protecting them. And the hadith confirm that Allah, he sent 124,000 messenger, as you see, and all of them, they are, their books are gone. It was narrated by uh, Abu uh, Ummah said, I said the prophet, how how many prophets were there? He said 124,000, <laughs> 315 were a good number. Okay. What are they, those 124,000? Can you name them for me? And where is their books? So you Muslims crying about what? You are crying about you have a God. He is an idiot. He's a fake God. He cannot be God because nobody can corrupt God's words. You know, especially the Quran says, the Quran of my friend, not me. The Quran says, Nobody can change the words of Allah. Let us go to the verse. Huh? <clears throat> is that your book saying is that is that is that in front of you nobody can change the word of Allah read it nobody can change it okay so how you are saying to me the Quran says nobody can change the word of Allah yet there is 124,000 books are gone including the gospel of Isa and the Torah of Moses so here, when we mention that to you, we are laughing because this is a contradiction clearly for the Quran. None can change his words. Okay, is the gospel of Isa is from the word of Allah? If you say no, people will laugh. Because we showed you, we just showed you the verses in chapter 3, verse number 3. It says that Allah is the one who sent the Torah and the, and, and the, and the gospel. So if you want to say to me that Allah, he meant here, nobody can change the Quran only, that would be very funny because that sound, like Allah is saying that the gospel of Isa is not his book too. <laughs> and that will be hilarious. <laughs> so you see, you see the stupidity? When the Quran says no one can change his words. Okay. Is the words of Allah given to Isa is considered the word of Allah? The Muslims say yes. Okay. Is the word given to Abraham? Is the word of Allah? They say yes. Is the word given to Jacob? Is the word of Allah? They say yes. 
is the word given to Yahya, which is supposed to join the Baptist, is the word of Allah? They say yes. Okay, where are they? Adnan Rashid explained to you, he have a stupid God. Anyone can spank him, change his words. And his God, he says it clearly, none can change his words. And saying this is only about the Quran, that will make us die laughing more. For that's mean Allah don't consider the other books his books. Obviously, he was borrowing them from somebody. <laughs> Let me guess. Allah, he was borrowing the book of Isa from who? From who? From who? <laughs> because he would say to me, oh, this is not about the word of Allah. This is only the Quran. Only the Quran is the word of Allah. <laughs> you, Muhammad and Ali, really, yes. really, 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 yes. Tell us more, uh, brother uh, Shar uh, Rashi, uh, what's his name? Shar, uh, Shar Shabuil. Go, go ahead. What do you want to tell us more? Go ahead. And that question will be addressed in another <coughs> video, hopefully in the future. Hopefully. So that line of defense to use the Quran to defend the Bible is not working. Uh, no, 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 no. We do not need to defend the Bible by the Quran, you idiot. I mean, what kind of Quran is going to prove to me my book? We are believer in Jesus 600 years before your literate prophet came to the existence. So what this have to do with our belief? As you see, we are believers and we are making fun of your prophet. And actually, after two minutes, you will say that Christians, they mock Muhammad. So how we are going to use the mock Muhammad to prove the Bible? We are not. We are just showing you how stupid what he is saying. Because this guy, obviously mentally ill. Actually, I was going to make a video today examining the health, the mental health of Muhammad. But look like you have the same problem. You made fun of your prophet in the beginning that you should not go and say, oh, if you find it in the Quran, oh, you find it in the gospel, oh, you find it in the Torah, you should, this is wrong, this is wrong, but the Quran do that. And now you are going to prove to us that the Bible of Allah is corrupt. Go ahead, be my guest, I love it. Be my witness, Muslims are fighting hard to prove to us that Allah, he sent the book to Isa and his book is gone. <laughs> How we can't trust this God anymore? Allah sent a book to Abraham, his book is gone. Allah, he sent book to John the Baptist, his book is gone. Allah, he sent a book to 124,000 messengers, their books are gone. Allah, the biggest loser and the worst librarian ever in history. So imagine this God, his name is Allah. He opened a library, he have 124,000 books. And after 1400 years, we find only one book there. Aren't you going to fire Allah immediately? for being the biggest loser. Tell us more about your loser. On Christians and Muslims. Lately, Christian missionaries have been using the Quran to defend the Bible. No, not now, true. It is clear that the Bible is corrupt. Clear. All scholars of textual studies, those- Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All the scholars, they agree that the Bible is corrupt. Okay, but those scholars, they agree that Muhammad is a fraud too. So shall we go by the scholars who they are against Christianity? I mean, look at the stupidity here. All the scholars agree that the book of Allah is corrupt. And you are bringing me the scholar who you call them scholars. Well, those scholars, they believe that Muhammad is a fraud too. So, I mean, you are really an idiot. And why you Muslim suddenly, you are following scholars who they are anti-Christianity and they are atheists to bring a proof against the book of God. Uh, does that include uh, Darwin? Go ahead. Who have studied the text of the New Testament as mm. well as the Old Testament have confirmed that the Bible is corrupt beyond repair. We do. Beyond repair, be my witness, guys. Beyond repair. We will continue and we will die laughing at what he said because you will, you will see in a few minutes how this guy, he is digging deep, deep for his prophet. Do not know what the original authors once upon a time wrote. We have do you remember? Remember this. Nobody knows what the original author ever wrote. Nobody. Nobody know. Nobody know. No. Only Rashid. Okay. I have no idea as to what Matthew, Mark, Luke and John might have written originally. Let Hold on. We have a Muslim saying the Injil is not the Bible. You are confused. The Bible contains some words of Allah, but not all of them. Ah. Okay, uh, guys. First of all, here we have a problem about this. Because uh, actually, uh, Rashid uh, uh, Adnan he will say that later. Uh, a question: Why the Quran even using the word Injil? That alone is a proving that Islam is a fraud. 
because you use the word Injil, which is a Greek word, to speak about a book sent by Allah. So Allah sent the book for the Hebrew Jews in a Greek language, and he called it Injil. <laughs> Obviously, Muhammad is copying a name of a Christian book in a Greek. And he learned from the Arab Christian that we call it Injil. So he use it and he claim Allah is talking and that additional proof that your God Allah is a fraud. Otherwise, he should not ever use the word Injil to describe a book he gave to Isa, who you Muslim, you claim that he was sent to the Jews only. So Isa was sent only to the Jews, but his book was in Greek. <coughs> True story. Okay, brother alone what God might have inspired if he ever inspired them so <coughs> this line of defense is not working so nowadays Christian missionaries when it comes to that question whether the Bible is corrupt or not they go straight to the Quran and they say no the Quran confirms the Bible so the Bible cannot be corrupt this line of defense is not working no we don't defend the Bible by this we are getting you busted you either that's the whole story we are showing you that you are stupid you do not know what are you talking about and in a second, everybody will see that you are stupid. Still, nothing changed. You were stupid yesterday, you are stupid today, and you will be stupid tomorrow. And Muslims will laugh at you. And God knows how many Muslims will leave Islam after hearing your video. Listen carefully. Okay. And why are they using this reasoning? Mm. This reasoning is being used to simply deceive people. Mm. To simply give this impression that somehow the Muslims cannot believe in this. But the Quran is very categorical on that question that mm. the Bible is corrupt. Mm. The current Bible in the hands of the Christians and the Jewish people is not pure. Okay, so uh, how your prophet, he said in the Quran, we just showed you, he said, you find me in your book. Uh, he was sure, was he? How he said to them, you find it, you find me, you find my uh, uh, written about me in your book. And now you are saying that, uh, no, they are, not, they, they are, their book is corrupt. Huh? How you say that? Did your prophet, he say to them, it is written in their book? It's amazing how the logic of those Mohammedan work. If the original book, and, he sh and everybody said, everybody heard him, that the original books are gone, nobody have them. But Muhammad in his time, he is saying to them, you find it in your book. Whom they find mention in their own scripture. Okay, hold on. How this book is corrupt and we call it their book. And how we can call it the Torah in Arabic. Muhammad, he did not say actually scripture. This is a false translation. He said, يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّورَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ They found... They found it in them, in their books. Which book? The Torah and the Injil. So how nobody have this book? And the scholar is saying nobody have the book. And we do not know where is the, the book. But Muhammad is saying in his time that they find it in his time in their books. So either you are a stupid or your prophet is a stupid or the scholars are a stupid or all of you are a stupid. Choose one. Because your prophet saying they find it mentioned in their book. And what he book, what mention? He mentioned the Torah by name. You see here it says in the law. It doesn't say that in Arabic. It says Torah. And he mentioned what? The Injil. It doesn't say a gospel in, in, in Arabic. It says Injil, which means the Greek book. So you are fabricating your own method making us laughing about what you said because those books supposedly are gone and the quran affirmed that but your prophet affirmed no and this is why we are quoting for you those verses so we can laugh at your prophet not at you you are just an idiot you know you are just a youtube guy who go to speaker corner who grow his beard you do not know even how to, to read two words in the quran and you come here to school us so we laugh and it's a comedy time for us that's all we do not need Islam to prove the Bible. Who is Muhammad? Muhammad have no witnesses. A guy, he came 600 years after Jesus to, to correct the Christians. How that can be? And not only that, you Muslim, you say he cannot even read and write. Which means if we put his name and the book on, and the name of Adnan Rashid in front of him, your prophet would not, would not know which one is him. 
Hey Muhammad, which one is Adnan Rashid name and which one is your name? Muhammad, you will look, I don't know. Allah knows best. Continue. These are not the Rashid. words of God revealed to Moses and Jesus. The Quran mm. is very clear and categorical on that. And there are some... Let me agree with you, by the way. We Christian, we don't believe that any word in the gospel is revealed from Allah. Allah is the devil and that is so clear because we can prove it very simple. If Allah is God, he will not say, I will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. While Jesus says, love your enemy, bless them, pray for them. So your God who target the Christians for he have a lot of hate for them for he is the devil proven to us that he cannot be the one who can speak for anything good. Secondly, your God cannot be proven to be exist and the proof is in the Quran. What kind of God? He says stupid things like hail is coming from mountains in heaven. What kind of God? He don't remember which one he created first, the stars or the mountains. What kind of God he think that the sperm became a blood and the blood became a baby? What kind of God he think uh, that women have a sperm coming from the upper side of their chest? This is God we are talking about? Yes, this is your God. So for sure we don't believe in your God. We, believe, we don't believe that the gospel is coming from Allah. God forbid. Unbelievable. That's disgusting. That is an insult. Continue, Rashid. Set of verses which I will be putting in front of you in this regard. Also, mm. Christian missionaries have been using another strategy mm. to defend the Bible, and that is by mocking Islam, mocking the Muslims, mocking the Prophet of Islam. This strategy is also not working because the Bible still remains corrupt. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, it's not working. Mocking Islam and mocking Muslims. You see, all what you do, you are mocking Jesus, your Muslims, Actually, I remember once you in the speaker corner, you were saying Christian Prince was speaking filthy when the fact I was quoting your prophet saying to a woman, suckle him. And this woman, the Muslim woman, she was speaking to me. She said very bad language about Jesus that he was playing with his mother. Do you believe it? And you, you defend her, you filthy. So you are the one who mock us. You are the one who mock Jesus. And you are the one who defend who mock Jesus. How dare you to defend the women? She insulted the Christ, saying that he was playing with his mother private part. How dare you? And yet you claim that Isa is a Muslim prophet. You are a hypocrite man. You are a lowly, slowly hypocrite. And no, we don't mock Muslims. We laugh at stupidity, my friend. And we are allowed to laugh at stupidity. And because we laugh at stupidity, many Muslims leave Islam and we save them. So we don't mock Muslims. We laugh at Muhammad and his teaching. And this is why many Muslims leave Islam after they see how stupid it is. And you are our helper. And from the beginning until now, you said nothing except helping us against Islam. Continue. And by the way, if mockery is wrong, well, you're a prophet. He mocked the Christians all over the Quran. Isn't it the Quran says that Christians, uh, the Jews, let's start with the Jews. Allah make the Jews pigs and monkeys. Isn't it Allah, he says, they are the worst enemy to Allah. Isn't it Allah, he call us kuffar. Isn't it Allah, he call us najis, which means filthy, dirty. Isn't it Allah, he order even to kill us, literally. Chapter 9, verse 29. Isn't it Allah, he says something really I like. Look at your God, how truthful he is. And here we will see that Allah is all powerful. Allah, he threatened the Christians to convert to Islam. And if we don't believe in Muhammad, Allah will erase our eyebrows and our faces and our eyes and our, our mouth will be in the back of our head. Brother. And guess what? I don't have eyebrows. And now my mouth is inside my head. And my eyes in the other side of my head because Allah erased them. Oh, you people of the book, believe in what have revealed, confirming what what the, you see. Look at the look at the liar. They say what was already with you. It doesn't say that. It says musaddiqan lima ma'akum to what is with you. If we change the translator right here, you will see it says what is with them. So even this verse, which is a threat in us to make us pigs and monkeys erasing our eyes, proving that we are right and your prophet is an idiot because he is confirming what is with us already with you. Do you see it? Confirming 
what was already with you and here i saying was but in arabic it says معكم, to what is with you before we change the faces and feign some of you beyond but some of you it doesn't say some of you by the way it says all of you before we erase faces okay what will happen how you can erase our faces he will take our eyebrows our uh, so your God, he made a promise. If we don't believe in Allah, he will do this to us. But this is not happen. The Muslim, they might lie to you, says, oh, this is about the judgment day. Allah will do it in the judgment day. Hold on. Stop. It says here, the same as we cursed the Jews, the people of the Sabbath, and we made them pigs and monkeys. So this is was not for the judgment day. The same as we did. We did already. Hmm? So, your God have nothing except cursing, mocking, lying about the Christians. And you are speaking about mocking? The follower of mockers? Isn't it your prophet? He said that the one who is proud about his inheritance from the Jahiliyyah, from before Islam, tell him to go and bite the penis of his father? What kind of a prophet? He say, go and bite the penis of your father. Hmm? That is a prophet for sure. Continue, Mr. Rashid. Suddenly the Muslims are not the one who do mocking. They are angels of Allah. You know, I mean, uh, calling people pigs, monkeys, nudges, kuffar, infidels, pagan, all kinds of titles and filthy names. And having signs in Mecca says, those highway for Muslims only and those highway for nudges, non-Muslims. It's okay. But you are the one is doing mocking the Christians, disgusting people. This is not a defense of the Bible. No. By mocking Islam and the Prophet of Islam or the religion of Islam, the Bible is not suddenly going to become uncorrupted. So this is a... Again, he is confirming that the Bible of Allah, nobody can say it's not corrupted. We confirm that the Bible of Allah confirm. We agree with you. Let me let me make it clear. Adnan Rashid saying the Bible of Allah is corrupted. I agree with Adnan Rashid. His God, Allah, is a potato. Anyone can spank him and change his book, and Allah cannot protect his book. This is the whole point. Thank you. Continue. Very important point I wanted to raise. Exactly. Mockery, more commentaries, okay, uh, laughing and joking and sarcasm is not going to take away our arguments and our belief. Exactly. You know, you cannot take it away. And like you see, uh, as an example, the Quran is protected. So if you want to laugh at us because the, the, the goat ate the Quran, that will not help you. That will not prove the point. Okay, uh, 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 Brother Rashid, the hadith in the front of us said that the goat ate the Quran and ate the verses of a breast feeding for adult 10 times. As long as you are the expert and the scholars, the one who examined the Torah and examined the Bible, did they examine the breastfeeding for adult of Allah in those books or only in the Quran those books can be found or those verses? And why we cannot find them in the Quran? I want Adnan Rashid, the one who is telling us the Quran is preserved, to recite for me the 10 time breastfeeding adult verses. I love to hear them. You don't need to do it. I mean, come on, don't bring a woman, take off her bra and start doing breastfeeding for adult, which is funny. And what kind of God he orders such a verse, man? Can you recite for me the 10 time breastfeeding for adult? The one who is lecturing us about the Bible is corrupt and the Quran is preserved. Are you saying Aisha is a liar? Now you agree, everybody agree, all the Muslims agree. We have tons of hadith. Authentic, confirming this, that the Prophet, he said, 10 time breastfeeding for adult and even Aisha, she practiced that and she ordered her nieces to do that. Now, I challenge you, Adnan Rashid, the one who claimed that your Quran never corrupt. Forget about the goat eating the Quran. No problem. This goat, maybe she is working for the Jews. I want you to recite for me the verses of 10 time breastfeeding for adult. What happened to them? And if you please, if you can tell us how we can do it, because the Quran now is gone and we do not know how to do it and we need to practice. I want to convert to Islam. Actually, I already I made an application applying for converting to Islam just because 
of Aisha. Look at Aisha. Aisha, she used to order her nieces that anyone want to admit to see her from her, from the Muslims, adult Muslim, like in your, in your age, maybe, I don't know, you are, I think you are 16, right? So if you are 16 and over, you have like, if you are 70, 60, 50, 30, 20, 25, you cannot go and see Aisha, Allah bless her, unless you suck the breast of her sisters and her nieces brother so when a muslim he's saying to us the bible is corrupt and it's like you think that this religion have like a have something serious to talk about they think they have the, they have a book this is a stupid cult we cannot as a christian use your book to prove our book because your book is stupid i'm going to prove jesus as god from someone who says that women should give their boobs to be suckled by someone so he can see her this is how the christian now they want to prove that jesus is god Aren't you ashamed of yourself? So now, Adnan Rashid, if you want to go and see Aisha, may Allah bless her, okay, al humayra he cannot go and see her. He have to go to the secretary. And the secretary, her sister, and the daughter of her sisters, they will give him her boobs, and Adnan Rashid, he will lay down, and he have to suckle 10 different times in 10 different days until he's satisfied. I hope you are not so hungry, man. So my friend, you are just bringing insult to injury to your God. You, are, you have a big mouth, but you have nothing to say. You talk too much, you say nothing. Except mockery of your prophet. It is you who is doing mockery of Muhammad. If not you, I will not be live on air right now. Thank you. Go ahead. Tell us more, brother. We will continue to love Islam hmm. and our prophet uh, as we always did. And it is a condition of faith for the Muslims to love our prophet. Now, when Christian missionaries want to take the message of the gospel, the loving message of the gospel to the Muslims, how do you love someone by insulting someone they love? Imagine so how you love us and you say you want to kill us. How you love us and you say Jesus was no one. How you, how you love us and you say Muhammad is going to have sex with Mary. So let us say, Adnan Rashid, I love you. And I am going, excuse me, I don't mean that, but this is what the Prophet said, I'm going to sleep with your mother. Is that love for you? Isn't it your Prophet, he said, when Khadija, she was dying, send my greeting to my wives in heaven. Khadija, she said, did you marry women before me? Who is your wife in heaven? He said, oh, uh, the wife of Mr. Pharaoh and Mary, the mother of Jesus. Is that how your love work for Jesus? You want to sleep with his mother? Is that how Muhammad, he introduced his love? Ah, this is the same love he have to his son. He went to his own son when the husband was not home and he flirted with the wife and he said to her, praise be to Allah, my heart is a flip for you. And then later he forced the son to divorce the women and he have her and he have sex with her without getting married. She said to him, what is the witnesses? A Muslim marriage have witnessed, you need to have witnesses, at least two witnesses. <laughs> he said, Allah and Zibreel are my witnesses. <laughs> so now if I can have sex with any woman, she said to me, oh, we are not married yet. I said, no, don't worry. Allah and Zibreel are what thing? <laughs> you are a joker, man. Imagine if I came to Christian missionaries and the first thing I said, your mother is X, Y, and Z. Would they uh, but we don't go to you and say your mother is X, Y. Why you are laughing? Why you are why you are laughing at, your, at the Muslims? Why you are laughing at yourself? Do the Christians they go to you and say uh, uh, your mother is a uh, no? We don't say that. If I want to say that to you, I will say like in Islamic way. As an example, I say Adnan Rashid is a son of Muta. That is not an insult, my friend, unless you are considering your prophet a filthy man. Have you ever heard of a prophet following the God of Moses? saying to his men you can go and rent women for one night stand hmm? so you are a person who don't like insult and you don't like to say to somebody your mother is etc but you allow your mother following islam to rent her private part 
for one night or three night stand. So if I say to you, your prophet says that, is that an insult? No. I'm quoting what your prophet said. Read with it carefully. And this is Sahih. Al-Bukhari. Allama Sanzar said, if a man and a woman agree, and look here between two brackets, it says temporarily marriage. Have you ever heard of a religion? They have temporarily marriage. <laughs> Brother Tatar, we are Muslim. And I name it the Dorthid. And we believe in temporarily marriage. Uh, no, Rashid, uh, you believe in temporary marriage. What does that mean? I'm going to play with you. As an example, you are a horny, and you see a woman, see a horny too. And you say to her, I'm going to give you $10. Are you allowing me to sleep with you temporarily? If they agree, that is no for Islam. Uh, okay, this is not a prostitution. Absolutely not, brother. This is halal. And this is called marriage. Uh, marriage? So this is the religion you want to defend and the Christians are wrong and we love our prophet. Well, your prophet is insulting your mother. Your prophet is ordering your mother to rent his private part temporarily. And to make it more ugly, the Muslim website explain and they say this is kind of rental. Kind of what? Rental. What? Are you serious? Yes, sir, brother. It's kind of rental. If you don't believe me, I can, I can let me get the reference so the, you, you will not say uh, I'm, I'm making things up. Give me a second. Man, I was planning to make this video short. Have fun with the Christian Prince. Christian Prince making the video short. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah you're right. Uh -huh. Abdul, a brother Abdul, you see, we don't do what you Muslims do. This is your Islamic website, alislam.org, explaining to us al muta A brother, what is the muta muta brother, is very simple practice. Allah Prophet, he practiced it, and the Muslim after him practiced it, and Caliphate practiced it, and this is in Sahih Hadith by the Sunni, not only by the Shia. But look how the Muslims explain to us the muta some work, this is the Muslim, al-Islam.org explaining to us the religion of Allah. This is God teaching. In some work, special term is applied to women who participate in muta, musta'ajara, or rented women. And you are talking about insult. You are insulting every woman, you idiot. Your Islam is an insult to every mother. Not to mention that your God, he ordered men to beat their wives. So you accept Islam teaching you that your mother can be rented and your mother can be beaten as if she is a goat. Actually, in America, if you beat a goat, you go to jail, which means goat have more right than the mother of Adnan Rashid, according to the American law, compared to the Islamic law. And look, musta'ajra or rented women, muta is considered as a kind of a rental because in general, meaning a man's basic aim in this kind of marriage, they call it marriage, is a sexual enjoyment of women and in return of this enjoyment women receive certain amount of money or property <laughs> so you are coming to us to school us about good and bad and this is the good of you if this is the good of muhammad what is the bad tell us more brother i am more interested in your knowledge listen to me I'm listening. Will they give me a willing ear? Will they ever listen to what I have to say about God Almighty and the love I... Hold on. I was going to give you my ear, but I just remember. You're a prophet. He said that shaitan, he sleep in our nose, piss in our ears. And you are playing me for my... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, just to show you the stupidity of this cult and those idiots who make you two videos. Isn't it your God, Allah, who says that he is the one who sealed our ears? So why you are saying why you don't listen to me? Let us show you your stupid Quran so everybody will die laughing at you. Hmm. Stupidity is amazing. They don't know what is in their book. By the way, I did not, I mean, I did not watch his video. I just heard a little bit when I was in the page of uh, uh, David Wood. <sighs> read, read, you idiot, read. So you want me to hear you. You want me to listen to you. Huh? The same chapter you are going to quote for us about Jesus, it says there, Allah has set a seal on their heart and on their hearing and on their eyes. <laughs> There's a veil. Huh? 
So you are saying that Christians, why you don't listen to me? Christians, why you don't hear me? A Christian is a Christian missionary. Allah, he puts it in their ears, you idiot. But this idiot, he do not know anything about his book. He go, go, this guy is a Google guy. He search few words here and there, and he make a topic about it, and he, that's it. He's supposed to he is a... <laughs> so look at the stupidity. Allah, he don't want us, he want us to believe in him, but Allah, he seal our heart and our hearing and our eyes, and he put a veil. And then Adnan Rashid, he says, would they hear me? Would they listen to me? Would they? And not only that, Allah said, in their heart is disease, and Allah increased their disease. Allah is Corona. Do you see it? So while Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy, your God will make us sick. And this is the Quran saying that. Which is proven to us that the mission the mission of Jesus is 100 percent against the mission of Allah. Allah wants to deceive us. Jesus wanna help us, wanna heal us. He came to the sick. This is why Jesus says, We love the Muslims, and He ordered us to love you, you all Muslims. While Allah He ordered you to hate us. Continue. I'd now receive the ignorant. They would be claiming for them they would never listen to me no so you do not take the message of love to someone by hating on people they love so mm. Mm. that's a good wisdom you don't want you don't make people listen to you by hating uh, people you love uh. so why allah he says in chapter 5 verse number uh, uh, 14 brother he will spread the hate and enmity between the christians and that how how that will help your mission brother how we can solve this issue now you see i want to listen to you and i want to believe in allah but the one is stopping me for believing in allah is allah he put a lot of hate brother oh people of the book there has come to you our messengers revealing to you much that you used to hide in the book as in the book where we hide it hmm? And passing over much. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. Because we do that, Allah saw what Allah would do. Glory to Him. From those who call themselves Christians, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that we sent to them. So we string them with enmity and hatred between one to other. Look, 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 look. Allah game is not working because Allah supposedly will make us hate Christians hating Christians. But according to you, Christians are hating Muslims. Mean, look like your God Allah, <laughs> he, he did it wrong. <laughs> you know, like there's some screws you have like, you know, you have to do adjustment in the engine to, to spread the hate in, in the direction you want. Look like Allah, according to Adnan Rashid, he made the Christian hate the Muslims. But the Quran says Allah will make the Christian hate the Christians only. Because you idiot, isn't it the Quran says that the most people who they are nice and kind to the Muslims are those who they are called the Christians? Stupid, idiot, you just insulted your God and you have no idea what your God is saying. Here we go. Yeah. So if the Christians are doing that and that, you know, that's mean Allah is an idiot. He do not know what he's talking about. And thank you very much. You just uh, get Muhammad busted. Let us let us uh, let us see what your prophet uh, said about that. Hold on. <clears throat> hmm. uh, <coughs> uh, let's see this search engine here. <laughs> oh boy I will make the videos uh, short huh you are right
Oh boy. What happened? This website froze. Give me a second, please. <clears throat> Let me open a different browser. Just to show you that those people, they have no idea what they are talking about. They are just a bunch of ignorant. Muhammad, in his strategy, he was trying to spread hatred between the Christians and the Jews, divide and conquer. So look what he said. Eh, this website stopped working. Ah, finally. All right. Chapter 5, verse number 82. Read with me carefully. You just prove that your prophet is a liar. The strongest amongst men to enmity to the believers is those you find it and those between the Jews and the pagans. And the nearest among them in love to the believers is those who say we are Christians. So you stupid idiot, you just said the Christians, they are hating the Muslims. When you are saying, your God is saying that the most nice people to the Muslims are those who they are Christians. So which one of them is telling the truth? Adna Rasid or Allah? For sure Adna Rasid. Allah is a liar. He is the devil. Continue Adna Rasid. I don't know uh, how, how long I will spank you. We have only four minutes. Mean. So this is a very important point I want you very to highlight very brother. quickly in the beginning. Does the Quran endorse the Bible? This is a very good question and the Quran answers this question in different verses. There are four set of verses. Now, what are these four points the Quran substantiates within its text? <clears throat> Point A, confirmation of the previous revelations given to previous prophets. Point B, the corruption of the previous scriptures. In other words, the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are corrupt. Point C, there are rem hey, hold on, hold on. how you are saying point a is confirming the previous original re revelation and then point b affirming the corruption of the previous scriptures isn't it the same one i mean look at the stupidity guys so a quran confirmed the previous original revelation but if they are corrupted i mean what the point of confirming something you don't have how the Quran confirming them, yet they don't have them. Do they have them or they don't? In order to confirm something, you should have it right now. Otherwise, confirming something I don't have, that's a stupid idea. And this is how stupid you are. Continue. Eminence of the previous script. Ah, Quran confirm, affirm the remnant. Ah, remnant. Ah, okay, we will go over that and we will die laughing too. Cheers in the literature around the world today mm. so we can still find the remnants of the previous scriptures the original revelations not the corruptions the original revelations original. have survived in remnants in literature around the world for example there are remnants in the new testament as well as some of the remnants can be found in the apocryphal literature which the christians rejected in the first three centuries mm. d point d the quran is the guardian over previous scriptures so the question is if the previous scriptures are 100 percent preserved and we have exactly what was revealed upon moses and no scholar will ever claim that by the way no scholar of christianity or judaism will you are just a stupid liar all, all of us christians we believe that this is what jesus gave us on your line and when you say scholars i mean if i say to you right now as an example that the book of a Suyuti says that there's thousands of verses in the Quran is missing. Do you agree with him? And he's a Muslim scholar, not an atheist. You will say, no, this is his opinion. Right? I just showed you the hadith of Aisha saying that the goat ate the Quran. Are you going to agree that the Quran is corrupted by a goat? You will say, no, uh, it's preserved. And okay, I say to you, can you recite for me the chapter, the verses of uh, breastfeeding for adult? You have no idea how to say it. If I say to you that Aisha, she said that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah, which means there's more than 200 verses are missing in one chapter alone. Are you going to agree with Aisha or you are going to be stubborn and say the Quran is preserved? So you are a person who insult even Aisha and you, because you are stubborn and you don't want to listen to your books, your books, not our books, 
not books written by the enemy of Islam. You see, when we present to you something, we present to you what is written by Muslims, by the most first witnesses like Aisha. Yet, because you are stubborn, you say, I'm blind, I'm not going to see it. I don't believe in that. Hmm? Do you? I will be waiting for you to recite for me the chapter of a breastfeed for adult, and this is a challenge of a million dollar for Adnan Rashid. Do he dare to do it? Do he knew it? Either you say we don't have it, and then you shut up, and you are a liar then, and now there is missing verses, because the Quran, supposedly, there's 10 time verses, there's a verse about doing it 10 time breastfeed for adult, and there is abrogation by 5 time. Where we can find the 5 time? So the 10 time is gone, and the 5 time is gone. Where they go? Adnan Rashid, he hide them because we don't want, he don't want us to practice breastfeeding for Muslim women. This is the whole purpose. Shame on you. Ever claim that we have the original revelations of Moses or Jesus. So the Quran stands as a guardian. Mm. So what are these verses? Very quickly, I will cover some of these verses. On point A, the Quran confirming the previous scriptures. We have chapter 2, verse 136, where God mentions the original revelations of prophets like Abraham, Ishmael, Jacob, and then the tribe of Israel, revelations that came to them, and then Moses and Jesus. Mm, question, where are they, those original scriptures? This is exactly what we said. This Muhammadan is proving to us that Allah is a fraud, because if Allah, he sent the scriptures, did he send them to be corrupted, or he sent them for a purpose of preserving them? If everything happened by the will of Allah, that means the corruption of the Torah and the Gospel was by the will of Allah. That means Allah is the Satan himself. If the corruption happened against the will of Allah, that means all those prophets who receive verses and books from Allah, as Adnan Rashid said, and those they are the ones who received the original, that means their work was in vain, it has gone. So why Allah he sent them? Don't Allah knew the future? Where is the book of Abraham? I want to read it. Rashid, I want to read the book of Abraham. The Quran, you just said, you are the one who is posting for us that Allah he sent the book to Abraham. You are the one who said that. I want to see the book of Abraham. Where in the Quran we see the book of Abraham? Where is the book of Ishmael? Where is the book of Isaac? Where is the book of Jacob? Where is the book of Moses? Remember, the Muslim believe that Allah, he gave the books of Moses, the Torah, all of it written by the end of Allah, not the Ten Commandments only. And you can imagine how many trucks Moses he need to carry in order to carry the whole Torah. The whole Torah written in rocks by Allah? Yes, this is what they say. So where are these rocks? Where is the book of Jesus, Isa? Huh? So you are the one who is mentioning that Allah he sent books, but you are the one who is in this ability to show us the books because you are a stupid and following a stupid fraud prophet. For if Islam is a true God, then he should give us the real books and say, okay, here we go. This is the book of Abraham. This is the book of Ishmael. This is the book of Isaac. But crying and saying, it's not the book, it's not the book. It's not there, it's gone. That's stupid because you just confirmed to me that Allah he sent books and he cannot preserve them. And that is a clear proof that Allah, he lie in the Quran when he says nobody can change his words. For the book of Abraham is the word of Allah, isn't it? The book of Ishmael is the word of Allah, isn't it? The word of Isaac is the word of Allah. So you Muslims, because you are following a fraud, and this fraud, he could not find this anything about him in those books. He said, oh, those books are gone. This, will, this is the strategy. It doesn't work. We are laughing. Go ahead. Tell us more. Thank you for witnessing and proving to us Islam is a fraud. Oh, sorry for that. We drag it by mistake. Dedicated to this task, to writing the scripture. Not all the Jewish people were writing the scripture. There were special scribes writing the scriptures of the Jews, special scribes. So it was a small group of people who were writing the scripture. So the Quran is definitely talking about them, those who were adding into the words of God. And Look what he just did. Look at this donkey, what he just did. If there is a special a scribe, they are the one who is adding, not all the Jews. Well, the rest of the Jews, they recite the Torah. The Jews, they recite it. Not only they sing it, the same as the Muslims, they sing it. So, the Jews in Arabia, they change. Okay, the Jews in Europe, they change what? The Jews 
in India they change what the change, the Jews in Persia they change what how all the Jews they agree to change in the same time I mean who in the world gonna believe in such a stupid thing and not only that if the Jews they change that how the Christians who they are not really too much having good relationship with the Jews for centuries they will agree with them do you see how stupid the story so the Jews they change the Christian they accept the change right away <laughs> I mean, this is the most stupid, <laughs> you know, just because Muhammad is not there, you want to say, okay, they change it, they change it, it was, it was there, they change it. The, it, it's, it. This is a religion of conspiracy. Everybody is against Allah. Anything. Sport against Allah. Music is against Allah. Allah, he has a phobia. This is a God who has a phobia. His name is Muhammad. He have phobia from the sound of the bell because the Christian they use it. He have a phobia from the cross because the Christian they believe in it. He have a phobia from uh, uh, from music and instrument. He have a phobia from uh, uh, from from dogs. You know, I mean, it's a phobia religion. Continue. Tell us more. And then they claim that these words are from God. So this is the second point in the Quran that the Quran addresses when it comes to the question of endorsing the Bible. Clearly, the Quran, according to this verse, does not endorse the Bible. And how do we know that? Hmm. We know that by the opinions of the companions of the Prophet on this particular verse. We have listen carefully. The opinion and the com of the companions. So where is your Prophet in this story? So your Prophet himself, he did not say that. The opinion of the companion so now you are saying to me that you Christian you should follow the book of Isa not the book of John but you are following the opinion of the companion why are they messengers of Allah too are they preserved people who they don't make mistakes so you just confirm that your prophet never said that and you just confirm that the Quran never make it clear and you just confirm that this is opinion of the companions. Well, your companions of the Prophet, they disagree about the muta, as an example. So some of them, they practice it. Some of them don't practice it. The companion of the Prophet disagree about if we have sex during the Hajj with a goat or a donkey. Do we have a punishment or not? The majority of them, they say, we don't have a punishment. The opinion of the scholars in Islam, they have even the different opinion about having sex with the mother or the sister. And according to the most majority of Muslim Sunni, if you have sex with your mother or your sister or your daughter, it is okay. There's no punishment, even if it's forbidden. And not only that, according to the opinion of the Muslim scholar, the majority, it says, and I can show the reference, that if you have sex with your daughter from out of marriage, it is halal. So you Muslims, obviously, you don't follow Muhammad, you follow opinion. Thank you very much. And that is exactly what we are looking for. Because if Allah, he made it clear, and Allah, he is God, and Allah, he speak good Arabic, then why you need the opinion of such, such a bunch of idiot who do not even know what is written in the Torah, who the Quran himself confirmed that they are ignorant, and we can show you that. If we go in the Quran right now, look what the Quran said. The Quran confirmed that Muslims are a bunch of ignorant and Christians are a bunch of educated people. About what? Educated about the book of God. Read carefully. Quran chapter 2 verse number 78 confirmed that those who they are called illiterate is those who do not know the book. Do you see it? Those are illiterate is not about not knowing how to write, how to read. It's about not knowing the book of God. And later he will use the same, the verse after it, so we will laugh at it. But let us go there. So who is illiterate? Is the one who do not know the book. Chapter 3, verse number 20, it says, If they dispute with thee, I have submitted my whole life to Allah, self to Allah. So I have those who follow me and, and say to the people of the book, Okay, hold on, you idiot. If we are people who don't have book, why Allah calling us people of the book? One of two, either your God Allah is out of words, he is stupid in Arabic, he does not know what to say. He should not call us the people of the book. If we are corrupt in the book, if the book is gone, how you call us people of the book? Sam Shamoon, he lost his hair. Shall we call him the guy with the hair? 
This is how stupid Adnan Rashid is. The Quran calling us people of the book, and not only that, and the people of the book and those who they are unlearned. Who is the unlearned? The Muslims. Well, Ummiyin. So the Quran confirmed that we are the educated people who have been given education about God, for we have the book of God. And you are spending your time to tell, say to us, we don't have the book of God, which means your God, Allah is stupid. Because if we don't have the book, then we don't deserve the name. You don't say to somebody who don't have a book, the people of the book, that means you are crazy. That means you are literally stupid. So you are saying to us from the beginning that Christians don't have a book, but we call them people of the book. Too much hashish. That is a lot of hashish. You should not call us people of the book unless we are people of the book, which means we have a book. And that book belongs to us. And we are following it. Otherwise, this name is deceiving. It's a lie. And thank you very much for exposing your prophet. Now, uh, continue, please, with your wisdom. Go ahead. Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the prophet, peace be upon him, who categorically stated by quoting this verse mm. that how can you go to Jews and Christians when you have the pure word of God in your hands, the Quran, while their books have been corrupted, while their books have been changed. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why, why you, why you move it so fast from the screen? Particular verse. We have Ibn Abbas. Mm. The read. Ibn Abbas says, "How you can ask the people of the scriptures about their books while you have Allah book, the Quran between two bracket, which is the most recent book re revealed by Allah." Okay, so hold on. But here he did not say that we are corrupting anything, because all what he is saying, why you need to go to their book? When you have your book. But look, look what happened now, Mr. Abbas uh, Rashid uh, Bartusi. You just got your prophet busted. Because if we should not go to the people of the book, and we have the book which we should follow. So why your God Allah, he says to Muhammad, go to the people of the book and ask them. Huh? So now you are following Ibn Abbas, refusing the Quran. Chapter 10, verse number 94, it says, If you were doubt, in doubt about what we have revealed into thee, then ask the people who read in the book before thee. So Ibn Abbas says, Why you want to ask the Christians and the Jews when we have the Quran? That means Ibn Abbas, he disagrees with the Quran, and Allah is, Allah is a stupid. So now, which one we follow, Ibn Abbas or the Quran? Obviously, Ibn Abbas, because Ibn Abbas makes sense. Allah don't make sense. According to Adnan Rashid, Ibn Abbas is right, and the Quran is stupid. Otherwise, why Allah is asking Muhammad to go and ask the Christian and the Jews if we should not go and ask them? <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. <coughs> Okay, continue. I want to finish this video, man. This video is supposed to be a few minutes. What is this? Cousin of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who categorically stated, I, by I quoting, I think I, I definitely I, talking about them. Hold on, I, I think I jump, I jump uh, apart here. Hold on, I think because, yeah, I think I moved the uh, uh, the mice before by mistake, by mistake. All right, uh, here, yeah, here. This part we did not, we pass it, we jump it verse 136 is talking about the original revelations of those prophets okay. okay some of them have been lost others have remained in remnants and we will see what comes uh, next the second point is the Quran clearly confirms the corruption of the scriptures of the uh, of the of the Jews and Christians okay oh. and that can be seen in chapter 2 verse 79 Stop! Stop! I will make you the joke of you two. Let me show you what you just did. You are an officially an idiot. This is a chapter 2, and this is verse number 79. And you are saying, this is an official verse, saying that the Christians corrupted the book. Do you see the word uh, Christian there? 
Do you see the word Christian there? No. Do you see the word Jews there? No. So how you know this is about the Christian? People listen carefully to show you the stupidity of those people. He just said he follow opinion. He don't follow Islam. Opinion. Because in the same chapter, if we go the same chapter, I'm not going to change the page. The same book. If we go back in verse number 41, you will see it says the following. In the same page, same book. We are not going to go to a different book. And believe in what I in, in what I reveal, confirm in revelation which, which is with you. Do you see it? Is that the Muslim translation? Yes. Is that the Muslim website? Yes. So the same chapter saying that Allah he confirm, Muhammad he confirm, the revelation which is with you. Who? Read carefully. All children of Israel. How he confirm it? If it's corrupted. And this edict, he is the one who said that verse number 179 is the one, or 79 is the one who is confirming the corruption. If you go to verse number 63, hold on. I think it was 63. Uh, no, not 63, hold on. 62, maybe. Yeah, if you go to number 62, those who believe in the Quran and those who follow the Jewish scriptures and those who they are the Christians and the Sabian and who believe in Allah and the last day, those and the righteous, they will go to heaven. Hold on. That is a promise happened in the time of your prophet. So if there is nobody have the scriptures, how it says those who follow the scriptures? If the scriptures of the Jews are gone, if you say to me, there's few who have the scriptures, this Muhammad should have a copy and he added to the Quran, the same as we have now, the Torah, the Christians, they have the Torah beside their gospel. Okay, so if you want to say to me, some of the Jews, they have the scriptures, not all of them. That's mean Muhammad is confirming that scripture, where it is. Why Muhammad don't present the copy from that time? And how he promised the Christians to go to heaven if the Christians are were following wrong scriptures? Does it say those who follow? Follow. In the time of who? In the time of Muhammad. And by the way, here, Muhammad, he had the Sabian, and the Sabian, they are star worshippers. So how the Sabian will go to heaven? But Muhammad is a fraud. He was promising everybody to go to heaven at that time because he was desperate to have a believers. Just follow me. You are Sabian. It's okay. You will go to heaven. You are uh, you are Hindu. You will go to heaven. No problem. Okay. You are Buddha. Oh, you worship Buddha. Uh, Buddha is a, is, a, is a accepted in Islam. He's a, he's a Muslim. Buddha is a Muslim. Yeah. Alexander the Great is a Muslim. <laughs> so this guy, he said, that the chapter here is confirming that the scriptures are corrupted. The Quran is not speaking about you, but about the Christians who forgot the teaching of the chain. Hey, hold on, hold on. We have a Muslim here. He have an opinion. Uh, let us share the Muslim opinion uh, because they are priceless. Give me a second. The Quran is speaking about you, but about the Christian who forgot the teaching and change the scriptures and not you Christians of today read it again but but this is not what he uh, your brother Adnan is saying <laughs> the whole video of Adnan is that the Bible is corrupt my friend so what's wrong with you Muslims here we go Muslim disagree about the Muslim they agree about not to agree as usual so how come your brother Adnan don't see what you see how come you are not blind like him? Eh, good for you. Continue. So Adnan, he confirmed that 279, chapter 2, verse number 79, is about the Christians and about the Jews. Their book is corrupt. But hold on. We showed you already more than one verse confirming in the same chapter that the Bible is not corrupt. Now, not only that. Why Adnan Rashid did not quote for us the verses after 79? Let us go there. What he will lose? I mean, why this guy is just quoting one verse? What about the rest? Because the rest are embarrassing. So this is 79. Read with me carefully. This is the verse Ad Adna Rashid, our sister Adna Rashid, oh sorry, our brother Adna Rashid. Uh, she decided to choose. Okay? All right. But if we go down just a little bit, little, little bit, 
you will see a different story. What we will see? In verse number 89, it says the following. And when there, there comes to them a book from Allah, confirming what is with them. Adnan Rashid, the, 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 the fraud, he will say to you, is confirming the original, but you either it says what is with them. So that's mean you you are the one who said the original, and the Quran says, I hope not. Are you listening, guys? Yeah, we lost connection for a second, but you will have it back. <clears throat> It's okay, it's back, it's back. I just said inshallah and now it's working fine. So now listen carefully. Adnan Rashid the fool, he said, let me let me go back to his video so we can die laughing. In which minute he said that? I forgot. Let us go back. Here and then the tribe of Israel revelations that came to them and then Moses and Jesus so in this verse how do I know the Quran is talking about the original revelations once upon a time the original revelations how do I know that because when we look at the names of the prophets we do not have their revelations with us did you hear it Muslims he confirmed this idiot that the Quran confirmed only the original but the Quran says confirming what is with them Confirming what is with them, not with the neighbors. Do you see? So what is with them? The original. The game is over. This this idiot, this guy is a joker. He's a stupid. This is why he don't dare to debate me. This is why all of them, they don't dare to debate me. They are a bunch of kids, YouTubers. They have no knowledge. A real sheikh of Muslims, they will not dare what to say what he is saying. They will not even dare to show up for a debate. This is why only we see kids. And those kids they say stupid things i mean how clear we can make it you just said that the quran confirm only the original but the quran saying what is with them <laughs> how clear we need to make it the story is over so my friend the muslims they are fighting hard to prove to us that allah he sent books and all his books are gone i that does not make me upset that helped my case that is why we should not believe in Allah, for Allah cannot be God. The true God, he will not allow people to change and play with his words. So if the Muslims agree that Allah, he sent all those books and all his books are gone, and then he decide all, only just to protect only one book. That means this God is, a, is, a, is a crazy. Where was Allah for 600 years since Jesus until Muhammad? Why he did not send anyone to warn us that this is not what happened? 600 years how many generations been misleaded why allah he waited all this time and then we get an edict in the middle of the desert who know nothing about the bible not even his own god this this person he cannot even quote correctly i'm talking about muhammad the names of anyone as an example who is the father of abraham muhammad he called him azar azar who is Azar? This is the Jews, they corrupt that too. Even the name of the father of Abraham, they will corrupt. Who is the father of the name that the, the name of the father of Mary, Maryam? Imran. Imran. The Christian, they corrupt that too. Who is the father of the, 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 the father of Moses? Imran. Imran too. So Mary, she have a brother, his name is Moses, and here Aaron, and he quote that from the Bible, from the Old Testament. He's a stupid. He thought the same Maryam, the sister of Aaron, is the same Maryam, the mother of Jesus. Right? D, D, Lee, my friend, you can say whatever you want. Don't talk about mockery. Your God is the God of mockery. Your God call us pigs, call us monkeys, call us the worst of creatures, call us animals, call us donkeys, call us nudges, filthy, dirty, 
and you are talking about mockery, shame on you. Secondly, it's a mockery for you to be a Muslim. You are following somebody, he says that somebody can beat your mother if he marry her. Shame on you. You are following somebody who says that he can have sex with the children. Shame on you. You are following somebody who says that your mother, she can rent her private part for one night to stand. Shame on you. You are following somebody who says that the sin you do is an order of Allah. Even your adultery. And he encourage you to do muta. When a person in Islam, he do nikah. And nikah not necessarily mean marriage. Muslims, they say, mean marriage. Uh, we can consider it marriage, as they say, as you see, here we go, temporarily, they call it nikah. They, call it, they say this is marriage. But we knew that this is, this is just a sexual contract. There's no marriage there. But look at this. According to you, the one who's talking about mockery, isn't it mockery to make me believe that when I have sex with the women, that a decision made by Allah for me I have to do? Is that a mockery or what? You just made Allah the devil. Read carefully. The Prophet said, Allah has fixed a very portion of adultery which man will indulge. And which of he of necessity must commit? Do you see it? Do you see it? So even adultery is a necessity to commit, and it is from Allah. He is the devil. Adultery in Christianity is not necessity from my God. It's the opposite. In Islam, it is Allah. He wrote for you a decision before He create you that your private part was going to have whatever with certain women and you cannot get away from it there's a muslim woman who called a sheikh and she said i am more than 30 years old now and i'm worried i'm not going to be able to have a, a husband the sheikh he said to her don't worry sister the prophet he said it's written in every vagina the name of the ones will if it written where written in the vagina the name of everyone will if it so even sexual intercourse in Islam is a pre-set pre decision by Allah. And this is the religion you are talking about. Right? We, we knew the Quran more than you do. I know the Quran more than your God himself. And you are welcome to call me anytime and people will die laughing at you about what you Muslims know about the Quran. This is why none of you dare to debate me. You make videos to, to insult me, to call me names, but where is the debaters? You cannot. So you speak too much about good God, but we cannot find this good God in Islam. Can we? How we can believe in a God, in a God he, he allow you to do muta? How we can believe in a God who allow you to steal? How we can believe in a God allow you to lie? How we can believe in a God who promised us big boobs in heaven? Why? He's a pimp in Las Vegas. He could not find a way to make me believe in him except big boobs. What if I like small boobs? I don't like big boobs. There's two things I don't like, big boobs and watermelon. So what will you do now? So you are trying to fool me, saying this is a God who promised me a cup of uh, uh, wine and uh, I will do dahman, dahman, boom, boom sex. You know what Dahman Dahman? This is what your prophet said, Dahman Dahman. You will push it so hard. Boom, 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 non-stop. I mean, what kind of a prophet this prophet is? And this is what you are saying to me, I should believe in in, and this is from God. What if I want to do it slowly? I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to do it Dahman Dahman. I don't like Dahman Dahman. I'm a romantic person. What kind of God this God is? So this is the religion you want to convince the Christian that they are wrong. Okay, Christian, your book is wrong. It says be holy like your God. It says don't commit adultery. It says don't steal. It says Jesus said if your eye fail you take it and throw it away. Jesus said it's better to put a milestone in your neck from hurting the little one. 
Jesus says, don't uh, don't lie. Jesus said, don't take false oaths. Jesus, so this is the bad Christianity. And this is the good Islam promising us big books and women. They are virgin. Each time we sleep with them, Allah, he put his finger there and he make her virgin again. And by the way, why Allah want to make her virgin again? Don't you think this is a cheating? I just slept with her. Hello? Imagine you buy a car and the car is being used. Excuse me, ladies. I'm just giving an example for the Muhammadan. Huh? And then you you wash it. Uh, you do some buffing and and you say this is a brand new car, nobody ride it before. What kind of God this God is? Why she have to be virgin again? What the point, brother? So when the Muslim, they, they fight hard and you think that those people, maybe they have religion. Like, man, these guys are, they have real God. They have a good God. When your prophet, he say, I swear by the Torah and he place his hand on the Torah and the Torah is corrupt. That means he's a corrupt too. I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, Muhammad, he says, bring the Torah to me and he placed his hand on it. But the Torah, according to Adnan Rashid, is a corrupt. One upon the time the Torah was true, but Muhammad, he took an oath in it. And what we will do now, Muhammad is a fraud, obviously, for he took an oath in it. So you try, you Muslim, to try to present. To, look at this story. Muhammad, he did not know how to read the Torah. Where he got this from? This is how Abraham, he cut his penis with. This is how circumcision is done. Do you know how the ads look like? Let us search for the word ads. Abraham, he cut his penis by this. Do you really believe in this? And this is the prophet who want to teach me the truth. Where, 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 where he got this story from? Hmm? Where Muhammad, he got this story from about Abraham cutting his penis with the ads. Why his penis was an elephant penis? Don't you think this is the big, big fat lie? This is the prophet you want me to follow and believe in. So you are willing now to investigate everyone except Muhammad stories. Prophet Muhammad. Hey, Abraham, how you cut it, man? I wonder this guy how, <clears throat> I mean, what if you miss? Mean. Well, will it look like Abraham, maybe he have like maybe a 20 meter one. So if he miss a few, he miss a few inches, what a big deal. Just uh, like lift his hand up and boosh, he hit it. I mean, what a big deal. You can try it yourself, try it. If Abraham can do it, okay, you Muslims, why you don't follow the Sunnah of Abraham? Aren't you Muslim Sunni? Aren't you Muslim Sunni? If this is what Abraham he did to cut, to circumcise himself, do you Muslim do that? I want you to do that. I want you to make a video about it. I want Adnan Rashid to do it. So you have mentally ill a man, his name is Muhammad, and you bring us this guy, and supposedly we have to believe in him. A guy who his own family, they said he was crazy, mentally ill. He takes shower with dead dogs. Maybe Adna Rashid can explain to us how this shower can be uh, practiced in Islam according to the Sunnah. Because it's Sunni. This is what Sunni means. Sunni, you practice what Muhammad did. So you have to cut the penis. But Muhammad never even circumcised himself. The Muslim, they say, Allah circumcised him. The same happened to me, by the way. I woke up in the morning, I found that uh, Allah, he brought the ads and, bzz, you know, he cut a piece. So when you Muslim, you come to us with a big mouth speaking about the Bible, we die laughing about what you bring to us anyway. You have the most crazy, stupid, idiot prophet ever. Who jump in dead water, in a water have dead dogs. This is what Jesus taught you. And you tell us, Prophet, he was a, he is the best to fight Corona and hygiene. And yeah, 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 here we go. That's the Prophet. Imagine you cut your penis with the ads and then you jump in this water. 
Face me, face me. After that, let us see how many infections you will have. What, what is in the water? Women of blood from period and menstruation rags and the flesh of dogs. What is missing? And garbage. Just do it, just do it. If you are truly a true believer, but none of you is a true believer. Today, you Muslim, you take a shower with shampoo made by the kuffar. This is the shampoo way for a prophet. This is the recipe of the best shampoo of Allah. Muhammad, he says, water is always pure. Nothing make it impure. Why you are using the shampoo of the kuffar? Use the shampoo of the prophet. I remember when Muslims, they, uh, a bunch of team, they want to refute me. They make a video says, the prophet was so clean and even he cleaned himself from lies. Do you see how clean he is? He is so clean and he cleaned himself from lies. My friends, my families, Islam is not even worth to listen to. But we have no choice except to save the Muslims. We are not against the Muslims. We will never hate them. Jesus orders us to love them. And we are not speaking against you as a Muslim. We are speaking about such an idiot deceiver. He, he want to take you to hell. It's clear that this guy is suffering from mental illness. You are, suffer you are following a crazy person for sure. Even Aisha, she said that Muhammad, he was bewitched. So if I say to you now, the bitch, hey, the follower of the bewitched prophet, he will, you will say, why you are insulting? Hmm? Why you are ins I'm not insulting? This is what your Muslim says to us. As you see, everything you say, it's in front of you. Aisha, she said, once the prophet was bewitched. So you are following a bewitched man. The Arab in the old days, they say bewitched to anyone is a crazy. Because they don't understand what he's doing and how he's doing it. So what they say, he's, he was bewitched. Even the, the man was so crazy at the point, he, he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he's not. Aisha, she said, the prophet continued for such and such a period, imagining that he had a step, have sexual intercourse with his wife. In fact, he did not. And by the way, this is what happened to me many times. You know, I imagine myself like I have a dozen of wives, and then I wake up in the morning, I find nobody. Unbelievable. Do you think, guys, I have the symptoms of a prophet? Because it looks like to be a prophet, you have to see those things too. I go to sleep. I see a bunch of women uh, around me, all over around me. And I think I'm doing like a boom, boom with them. I woke up in the morning. I found nobody, brother. Obviously, Allah preparing me now to be a prophet because this is what happened to Prophet Muhammad. I have the symptoms of a Prophet Muhammad exactly. And sometimes, brother, I feel like I don't want to take a shower for a year. So obviously, I'm like, on, on, on the top of that, take a note, I am an Arab. So I have all the qualification. I am an Arab. I take a shower once a year. I jump in water, have dead dogs and women blood different period and garbage. And I say it's secure. Don't fear, don't worry about it. And uh, on the top of that, I imagine women and I imagine have sexual intercourse. Huh? And not only that, I saw in myself, in a, you know, a donkey come to me and I fly to the 7 heaven 11, uh, 7 11, and I saw all the prophet there and uh, Allah promised me virgin. I think I'm going to be a, a, a prophet of Allah very soon. And not only that, brother, I'm going to promise you something even bigger than the prophet promised so I can get more believers. I will promise you that you will have women with the three boobs, not two boobs. Because the Quran promised you only two books. Those who follow the new prophet of Allah, uh, you know, he, they will get uh, women with uh, th three boobs. Uh, three boobs and uh, seven nipples. We will put like, you know, like two nipples on each boobs and one of them in their lips. So that even when you kiss them from their lips, uh, you will find like nipples like for entertainment. And that will make me a true prophet. Because a true prophet is the one who brings more boobs. It's obvious, isn't it? So people don't forget to download the video. We don't keep the video for long. Wait maybe for 30 uh, minutes from now, the video will be ready to download. And by then you can have it, post it in your uh, channel. As you know, I don't keep videos on my channel. And I wanna say thank you very much for being here. And may the Lord have mercy on the fool. If a, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, 
How fool are you? And I'm serious about that. Isn't it obvious that this man is a fool? But if you are a fool, anyone can fool you. You have to be literally fool to believe in such a garbage that there's a guy who promised me and this number of women to have sex with them. And that is supposed to his God. This is what God is about now. He became a pimp. Sexual production vendor. Did Allah open a casino or not yet? Obviously, he have a, the biggest casino in earth. As, I mean, in the, in the galaxies. Get ready, my friend. You will not have rest in the heaven. You will be having sex non-stop. You will be sexually addicted. Sex maniac. For following a sex maniac prophet and sex maniac God and sex maniac angels who they have nothing to do except sex and sex and sex. And if we ask them about philosophy, they talk about sex. If we ask them about religion, they talk about sex. If we ask them about the promising of God, they speak about sex. If we ask them who is Allah, they speak about sex. For they have nothing in this religion except boobs and vagina and sex. For this God is the devil. Thank you very much for being here, everyone. If you like to read more about Islam, you can read my books. You can find them on Amazon and more books coming soon. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And don't forget to download the video as soon as it's ready to download it. Thank you. Take care.